there we go. So this morning we've got Valerie Roebuck and many of you will have heard of Valerie uh, in, in all sorts of ways. She's the president of our centre at the moment during this uh, really tough time um, trying to make decisions and make sure things run well. So, um, but Valerie tells me that she is celebrating her 50th anniversary of being in Samata because that's how long ago it is when she started, which is quite remarkable and was in there at the very, very beginning uh, when it all began um, in Cambridge with, with Lance and Paul. So that's uh, quite significant. And of course, many of you know Valerie's work through her translations of very key texts in in um, Eastern uh, philosophy in the Upanishads and particularly relevant to us the Dhammapada and other things as well. So I'm very happy to hand over to Valerie now who's going to give a talk entitled Living Divinely the Brahma Viharas which sounds very enticing. Okay then Valerie. Over thank, to you. Thank, thank you. Thank you Veronica. Um, so we, we we will begin um, with, with a, um, a me suitable meditation, um, and uh, and then after that, uh, I think I will I will adjourn. I hope you can see and hear me reasonably okay at the mo at the moment. But uh, for the actual talk part, I'll I'll adjourn somewhere where where you may be able to see me a bit better. But I uh, thought it would be nice to start off in in my shrine room. Um, can can we have a volunteer to chant the the Karaniya Metta Sutta to start us off? I'd just like some. I um, wonder if Tracy feels would like to do it. I can. This session living divinely because it is about the, the four meditation practices known as the Brah Brahma Viharas, which. Um, and they're called after Brahma, who's a very high-ranking deity in South Asian mythology. So if, if you can practice these states, then you're, you're living, living like a divine being, wherever you happen to be. And uh, I've found these practices extremely sustaining in in these strange times that Veronica's mentioned. Now there, there are there are many ways of, of practicing loving kindness and, and the rest but uh, I would do a not a, a shortish practice based on the way I normally do it and uh, leading into the other uh, divine abidings and uh, and then we can have a talk about some of the theory and the ways the ways you can practice it we often talk about samatha as though it were one one practice the one with the stages that we all starting with the longest accounting that we all learn but of course nearly Nearly all the traditional Buddhist ways of practicing meditation are samatha practices and practices of loving kindness are, are certain, certainly samatha practices. But so, so, so are all types of practices on mantras and then kind of visualizations and uh, uh, kasina practices and so on. They all involve developing concentration so they and lead to calm so they are all summer summer to practices which we of course we develop also to lead on to wisdom so let's um, begin with loving developing loving kindness to ourselves and others so And then, then we shall spread it to all beings. So 
So let's begin by wishing well-being to ourselves. You can begin at the top of the body with the head and face. May my face and head be well, healthy, free from injury, free from harm. Keep the breasts long and smooth if you can, but you don't have to pay particular attention to it. Um, it's the loving kindness that's the main object. And let that spread. So the neck and shoulders. May they be well, strong, healthy, free from injury, free from harm. through the arms, down through the upper arms, through the elbows. Forearms. Wrists. And hands. All the way to the ends of the fingers. My arms and hands be well, strong, healthy, free from injury, free from disease, free from harm. And back to the center, down from the neck into the chest. Let that consciousness spread throughout the upper part of the body. May this upper body with all its organs be well, strong, healthy, free from injury, free from disease, free from harm. down to the lower body and the whole of this body with all its organs so vital to our existence. May it be well in every part, healthy, free from injury free from disease, free from harm. And let the good feeling flow through the upper legs, through the knees, through the lower legs. to the ankles, to the feet, right to the ends of the toes. May my legs and feet be well, strong, healthy. 
free from injury, free from disease, free from harm. Be aware of the whole body. Wish it well. Let this whole body and every part be well, strong, healthy, free from injury, free from disease, free from harm. May my mind be well, happy, free from worry and trouble, free from distress, free from harm. There is this well happy feeling there, or clarity, or whatever form consciousness takes, let it spread. Because just as I want to be well and happy. So do other beings. Let it spread. So all beings in your house, humans or animals, and all beings in this house be well, happy, healthy, free from worry and trouble free from conflict, free from disease, free from harm. And let it spread through the area where you live, through all the in the houses, in the streets, or in the countryside, wherever you are, let it spread. May all beings in this area be well, happy, healthy, free from worry and trouble, free from disease, free from distress, free from harm. Let it spread throughout the city or town and the, and the whole, throughout the whole region where you live. May all beings here be well and happy and free from distress. Let it spread throughout. Your country, throughout England, throughout the UK, throughout the British Isles. 
and all beings in these islands be well, happy, healthy, free from worry and trouble, free from disease, free from harm. And it spread throughout the continent. All beings in Europe be well, happy, healthy, free from injury, free from distress, free from conflict, free from harm. Let it spread throughout the world. And all beings in Asia be well, happy, healthy, free from worry and trouble, free from conflict, free from disease, free from harm. And may all beings throughout Africa be well, happy, healthy, free from worry and trouble, free from disease, free from distress, free from harm. And may all beings throughout Australia and New Zealand and the Pacific countries, may they be well, Happy, healthy, free of injury, free from disease, free from harm. And may all beings throughout the Americas, North. South and Central America, may all those beings be well, happy, healthy, free from worry and trouble, free from disease, free from distress, free from harm. And may all beings in the North and South Polar regions be well, happy, healthy, free from conflict, free from trouble, free from harm. And may all beings throughout the whole earth Living in land or on land or in the sea, in the air, in the depths of the earth, large or small, known or unknown to us, near or far away. May they be well, happy, healthy, free from injury. Free from worry and trouble, free from conflict, free from distress, free from harm. And if you wish, you can let this spread beyond the earth. Because 
we know that whatever sort of beings there are anywhere in the universe, whatever they look like, they will want to be well and happy and free from disease and have happy lives. So let it spread throughout the solar system, throughout the stars, throughout the galaxy, throughout the universe, in all directions, above, below, north, south, east, west, is stretching as far as we can imagine. May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. May all beings be free from distress. Notice the meditation of your metta, love and kindness. And reflect now that wherever there are living beings, there are beings who are, who are suffering. whatever beings there are, all the ones we know about and who we don't know about, we know they'll all be born in some way, get ill, get old, die. So whatever beings are experiencing suffering, may they become free of suffering. May they become free of suffering and the causes of suffering. This is a meditation of karuna, or compassion. And reflect also that wherever there are living beings, there are many beings who are experiencing happiness, joy, success. Reflect, may those beings Continue to be happy. May they not be parted from their happiness and the causes of happiness.
with this meditation of mudita, gladness for the joy of others. Now reflect that there is cause and effect in this universe. That we know that choices, good or bad, that we made in the past affect what is happening to us today and we know that the choices we make now, good or bad, will affect what we experience in the future. So that all beings are experiencing results, actions done in the past, and setting up results for the future. This meditation on equipoise or on equanimity, Upeka. May all beings come to understand this, to attain freedom. So let's return to where we're sitting, to awareness of our room, awareness of all those who are sharing this meditation with us. May you all be well, may you all be happy. May you all be free from distress. So I find it, find it a little difficult to talk after a, a meditation practice to you. But um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll read a couple, a couple of things. This is a, a verse from the Dhammapada about metta. 
uh, metta vihari yo bhikkhu prasanna buddha sasane adhigache padang santang sankaru pasamang sukang. The monk who dwells in loving kindness, confident in the Buddha's teaching, attains the peaceful state, the blissful stilling of conditioned things. So this is a very ancient method of meditation. It was prob probably one of the ones that the Buddha learnt from his teachers rather than one of the ones that he came up with himself, though no doubt he, he adapted it. And um, I'll, read, I'll read my translation of the, the Metta Sutta because a lot of the translations we get we use rather old fashioned language and make it sound very complicated. Um, and I've, tr I've tried to put it into modern English. This is what to do if you know what is best for you and seek to attain the state of peace. Be able, upright, truly upright, easy to speak to, gentle, not arrogant, content with needs easily met with few responsibilities of simple livelihood, with senses calmed, skillful, not proud, not possessive about families. You should not do the slightest thing for which otherwise folk might reproach you. Think, happy and at peace, may all beings be happy-minded. Whatever living things there are, without exception, weak or strong, tall, large or medium-sized, small, atom-sized or huge, seen or unseen, living far or near, born or about to be born, May all beings be happy-minded. Let not one deceive another or despise another anywhere. Let not one wish evil on another through anger or ill will. Just as a mother would protect her own child, her only child, even with her life, you should develop a limitless mind towards all beings. You should develop a limitless mind, spread loving kindness to the whole world, above, below and across without obstruction, enmity or hatred. Standing, walking, sitting or lying down, so long as you are awake, you should maintain this awareness. They call this divine abiding here. So, not falling into wrong view of good character, endowed with insight, giving up grasping for sense pleasures, you will not return to a woman again. So it's, it's actually saying that um, with this practice plus, plus good character and attaining insight, you, you, can, go the, you can go the whole way. Tr traditionally, they say that the, the first three Brahma Viharas can lead you to the first jhana because there is still um, emotion there, but the, but the, the Upeka can take you to the fourth jhana. So, in in any case, they they're also these practices are very um, find very very useful in daily life. I mean, the 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 introduction that we chant before the Karaniya Metta Sutta is quite funny, but it it um you know it's sort of the, the one that begins Yasanu Bawato Yaka. That's something that would have been added quite a long while after the you know, Buddha's time but it's it's sort of saying if you by the power of this um, chant this blessing um, till yakas sort of spirits can't can't make you see spooky sights and you'll you'll sleep well and you won't when you're asleep you won't have bad dreams so come super and and so so by the and, and, and so by the power of, power of this um, um, protection that's that's so so full of full of good qualities. Um, let's let's chant the let's chant the Metta Sutta. So so just just chanting it was felt to be be good for you. Let alone, but uh, ideally, of course, as it says, you you should practice it all the time. Um, standing, walking, sitting, or lying down, as long as you are awake. So, 
the possibility life is as it is it's 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 not always easy to feel loving kindness for all, all beings is it sometimes we get quite annoyed by people and um sometimes we we feel as though oh bless you Sorry, <laughs> but um, sometimes we we feel as though that though the um, somebody else is make, making us angry, you know, he made me angry, um, and, uh, and I think this sort of is reminding us that actually no, we 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 have a, have a have a choice. Um, the person might do something wrong but uh, whether whether we allow it allow anger to arise is is it's up to us and we can learn to uh, to control these things there, there are quite quite a lot of traditional ways of, of practicing particularly uh, metta or loving kindness and uh, I know people people do do different methods. I I learned the the way I learned to, learned to do it actually came from two two very eminent um, Sri Lankan monks many decades many decades ago. Vener, venerable uh, Dr. Sada Tissa um, and Venerable Pia Tissa. Neither, neither of them with is with us any longer. Ven Venerable Sadatis, who was a great scholar who wrote uh, some, of, some of the books in our centre library about the life of the Buddha and the Buddha's past. And, um, and Venerable Pietisa, not, not the one that we know from uh, the Ketumati Vihara, but the one who became the, the abbot of the, the Sri Lankan uh, monastery in, in New York. So two two monks who who gave off powerful qualities of loving kindness themselves so when you when you're with them it's it's easy to pick it up and to practice it because these qualities are are very are very catching i'm sure any any of you who've got animals will have noticed this I'm sure I wanted to say something very, very, very brilliant, but I'm just, I'm just here feeling, <laughs> feeling loving, uh, loving kindness and, and other qualities. And it is rather hard um, in, in a way, not having people's physical presence there is, is, is a little, um, um, makes it, makes it slightly harder to ground yourself. So, I think at this point I would welcome some questions and then maybe we can carry on with discussion. So if anybody's got any questions or, or thoughts about or wants to talk about how they practice the Brahma Viharas and, and so on, then uh, they can unmute themselves. Can I? Oh, yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was so um, in, intrigued really about the translation because I, I have never found a really good translation of the Metta Sutta. Um, to you know, to give to other people. Often I've wanted it's something I've often wanted to to give someone who doesn't know a lot about Buddhism. Or and and I just wondered where is your translate? I mean, I want to know more about how that came about because it was uh, it was just perfect. I thought from what I've seen before and and how is it I've missed it? I mean, where can uh, how? Well, I've where do, it's not it's not actually being being uh, published as as such but i'm happy to send it to anybody who'd like it but um mm. i think there's there's a great tenden tendency um for um people translating religious texts to feel they have to use old-fashioned language and uh, yeah. you know probably vague, vaguely 
thinking of the, the King James Bible or something, you know, whereas in fact when, when the King James translation of the Bible was done, they weren't writing in old fashioned language. And uh, so I think this, this was became a habit and also um, um, some, sometimes uh, people use rather translate rather literary constru constructions that that are quite normal and natural in 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 Pali or Sanskrit or whatever and just don't and just sound rather forced in English I mean the example is um, I, the, the, the first line uh, Karaniyam Atakusalena I mean literally um, this is what is to be done by one who is skilled in in his benefit or skilled in his goods you know so but um in 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 um, Pali, it's quite natural to put things in the passive voice like that and use what, what we technically call gerundives, you know. Whereas in English, what we say, uh, this is what to, this is what to do. <laughs> yeah. And and also um, the the other thing is that tendency to, to the sort of statements that are made in the sort of indefinite third person. One should do this. One should do that. They don't. They, they don't sound very natural in English these days, especially in poetry. I think in English we normally say you, yes. you should do this. So, uh, yeah, so that seemed, that seemed the logical thing to do. So I did it quite a long time ago and just wanting a modern translation to, to share. And then I sort of forgot about it for a bit. And then when we were looking for, in fact, after my, my husband died and we were, we were planning his, funeral and we wanted to, a translation for the the um meta sutta to put in in the order of service so i i sort of um found my translation of meta sutta and sort of polished it up a bit and we used it for that and i've used it for a few things since but i'm i am uh, i i am quite i'm i'm quite happy to share it with anybody who would like it well, that's, that's really lovely and definitely because it does seem to be the occasions, you know, of marriage, birth, death, those occasions when there might be people present who, yeah. who aren't familiar at all with a Buddhist tradition. And that's when the Metta Sutta has meaning. And so the translation is, that's when I've been seeking it really. So yeah. I'd, I'd also like to know, were there any parts of the translation in doing that? that were particularly tricky or uh, you needed really to work it out quite a bit, you know, because um, um, it's always interesting to know what I'm trying to I'm trying to remember because it was quite a, quite a long time ago. I, I think, um, I mean, some of the things might seem a bit um, ambiguous. I mean, the bit about not possessive about families, Kulesu and Anugito. I mean, they're probably thinking about monks who get, you know, you know, not not picking and choosing, you know, because you might have a, a family of wealthy landowners who give you give you lovely a, a lovely banquet every time they offer food, or there might be some some poor poor peasant who can just give you a little bit of a, a little bit of rice, and so you. So I think it's saying you should, it's probably more than talking about some um, the sort of families you're born into. It's probably, it's probably thinking about that, you know, not kind of picking and choosing about, uh, for a monk about it or none about their supporters, but, um, yeah. Um, but not being possessive was the thing that caught my mind. Yes, yes being that's proud, right. proud, Being proud and possessive about your family because just, <laughs> yeah, that's but, what you, that, that made sense, you know. Yeah. People but, can be like that sometimes. Yeah, but possess, of course, possessive, the kind of love or attachment that's possessive is precisely what uh, Meta isn't. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So, so, um, oh, does that spot share it on Facebook one one time? A few people chipped in to, to uh, pay for a Facebook advert where we rather than just advertising our specific activities, we just we, I think one summer we just put, put it on and it got shared by people like meditation groups and so on all over, all over the world. So, 
wow. you know, just to get a bit of the Buddhist teaching up there. But, um, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll... Could I ask, that bit at the end when it said not, something about right at the end, not, not being, um, I can't remember what word it was about sense desires. How does uh, that, because yeah. I've seen it before as not holding on to fixed views. So it's always felt to me as if um, when you're very definite about your own opinions, that divides. Yeah, yeah well, that's, that's in the same verse. So not falling into wrong view, Dittim Anupagamma, Siluwa, a good, a good character. Um, how does it go after that? Right, right. <laughs> Um, that's the name of Sampano. Oh, yes, so in down in sight, uh, and then Kame Su Vinaya Gaitan. So, kar karma, of course, not karma, but karma, as in, as in the name of the god of love, as desires, um, right. sense, sense desires, and so on. The same, same as we uh, vow not to, to not to practice Kame Su Nicha Chara, sort of wrong, wrong view amongst sensual matters. Um, so um, giving up grasping for sense pleasures, you will not you will not return to a womb again. In other words, if you if you believe in rebirth, you won't you won't be born born again. But uh, if you. if you don't, you can at least see it that you won't be fall, won't fall back into your old bad habits and patterns. Mm -hmm. Thank you, mm -hmm. Valerie. When you're doing um, the uh, the meta practice. Could I ask, out of interest, what 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 posture do you use for the hands? Oh, uh, um, I normally I I normally just do the, do them resting in my lap, but uh, yeah, but I don't I don't think it's I I don't think it's absolutely necessary. I think you think you could you could put them on your knees or so on, mm -hmm. but. Uh, I don't think I don't think it's it probably matters quite so much. Mm, um, thank you. Yeah. Why, um you were thinking in terms of sort of opening it opening them up to mm. all beings. Yes, actually that that would be worth worth a try. I think I'll try I would try that. Yeah. I'm just yeah. interested what you found to work for you, that's all. Yeah. Thank no, you. it's 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 always uh, yeah. Yeah, so you can do you can do that uh, practice in as much detail as, as you like because it's very good to have have a a real good basis in well good feeling towards your own body before before you spread it to others. It's uh, mm -hmm. Mm. I think we can see the habit that's often caused by people who try and do good for others when they don't like themselves very much. And uh, <laughs> I, th I think, I think the Buddhist tradition is very realistic about this. <laughs> and, um, but there are, there are other ways of, of doing it. I, I mean, I'd, what um, I think Les referred to as the geographical method when I do when I do it, I think that's that's very much based on what I learned from the Sri Lankan monks. Yeah. So I've I've probably over the intervening four decades or whatever it was, I've probably adapted it a, a bit. Um, but so I, I remember Venerable uh, Pietista saying that you may see the 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 world shining like shining like the moon, you know, when you I mean, which is. Uh, I suppose it's a kind of metanimita, isn't it? Um, but some, I, the, I think the version in the older text is often um, you sort of start off with yourself, and then, and then um, somebody that you're friendly with, and then somebody that you're neutral to, and then somebody you don't you don't like very much, and 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 sort of share share the feeling equally among them all but I, I find that you can get a little bit bogged down doing it like that but of course it's a matter of, of finding the way that suits you I think, I think you, you can get a bit tangled up deciding who you like and who's neutral and, and of course there, there are there, there are very there are various sort of traditional instructions you know they like they they sort of say things like don't try and practice it towards 
somebody of the opposite sex. Now, I've said some, some people take this awfully literally. I had somebody who thought she shouldn't practice it towards, towards her brother or something. Whereas, of course, the, the point is not, not to do it to somebody you might fancy because then it, it, it changes into a different type of feeling. And, and so the, the examples given of a, a monk who started trying to practice it towards the lady who'd been his wife before he came, became a monk and ended up getting very upset and sort of banging her head against, his head against the wall of his, of his uh, um, room. So, so the whole point is you, you're, you want to develop these particular feelings in their, their um, um, well, they're also called the illimitables or immeasurables. So, you, so you, what you don't want is them uh, tipping over into different feelings that are attached type of feelings. So, so uh, when, when practicing kar karuna or compassion, you, you don't, and you reflect on suffering, you don't, you don't want it to tip over into um, feeling sadness or feeling depressed. So the recommendation is really to, you know, to build up a good base of loving kindness before you move on to the others. I, I hope that we're, we're we're all experienced enough meditators to notice when things are starting to tip over and uh, can uh, return to the, the um, Brahma Viharas. But um, usually when I'm, if I'm doing this practice with beginners, I normally just, just do um, the meta stage. Because, uh, that's, I think that's safe for everybody. And a lot of people, I've been using it quite a lot in um, our open drop-in sessions for, to help sort of online to help people get through the, the um, stresses of the pandemic and quite a few people seem to have been finding it, finding it quite useful. So. I wanted to um, respond to Charles um, Shaw's um, uh, input about the hands and the gestures because I'm um, recently um, I haven't done it very much, but I have been doing something with the hands and combining something with the chanting as well. And um, something called the Metta Sahagatena, which means spreading the Brahma Viharas. Um, oh, yeah. Divided divide into four verses, Metta, Karuna, Mujita, Rupeka. And it's mm -hmm. something I picked up at the family camp at Amaravati. And um, I just happened to... Um, do it recently and we did it once on Lance Cousins week where the instruction the night before was for people to come along with something different a different chant that they could offer to the group for, uh, just for a change a bit like Paul was saying try something try something different innovation and um, so I, I brought along this Metta Sahagatena the spreading of the Brahma Viharas and um, Lance was quite taken with it, he liked it. And the way, the way it was taught, or not taught, the way I learned it or heard it, was running straight through without really pausing in the way that, you know, mm. chanting often is done. And um, what um, Lance suggested was that after each section, there's a pause, a little pause where, where people know that it's then moving on to Karuna, so a pause and then moving on. And so I've always remembered that and, and, and try to, if I ever do it, and I hardly ever do do it, but I haven't forgotten it. But this time when I was with, um, I think I was on my own, I was my, on my own, but I was, um, my, my cousin's very unwell and somebody else is very unwell. And I, there was a strong feeling to try and do something different. And um, instead of a little mini pause, what happened was, um, and I didn't think about it beforehand, it just came about, and was that in, I do the meta section, it's kind of, you do the qualities of the meta, and you do it, and a second time, and a third time, and a fourth time, and then there's a little bit about mm, different um, images to do with meta. But then instead of a mini pause, I did a, a little five minute, two minute, five minute, um, kind of following the breath sort of practice, not anything to do with um, sharing the matter or wishing the matter or anything like that. It was simply 
kind of just breathing and knowing whether it was in and knowing whether it was out and just very simple. And then doing exactly the same with Karuna, exactly the same with, with uh, Mujital and Upeka. And it had a really interesting, very um, kind of grounding effect and very much warming of the heart. And at the same time, I did do different things with the hands and I did, I don't think I did do it, but at the time afterwards, when I was reflecting a bit, I thought if, if you began by settling in the heart in, in kind of, um, you know, what's it called? You know what it's called anyway. I can't think at the moment. So starting right there with the heart, which kind of also links, I suppose, um, different ways. And then uh, with Karuna, um, kind of uh, the hands open, open on, on the knees, on the legs, or just to the side. And that kind of felt, and, that, and that, not, not kind of in a big way, just in a very gentle way, just kind of like, come um, a bit, a bit like in Tai Chi, a bit kind of tingly, a bit kind of, there was energy. And it was, it was no longer here, or here, you could even do that, I think, with, with the um, one so yeah. meta, meta, but Karen I was kind of open, open-handed and then um i'm not sure i'm not sure what happened with music it might have been hands flat on the legs so just gentle and and just um just because kind of music sometimes can go through a bit of sort of envy or for me can go through a bit of instead of like seeing this person really happy and successful and i might start there might be a tinge of oh my gosh oh my not very you know so with the hands flat on the legs, it was kind of like a bit of a balance between not going to that dangerous place or unskillful place. And then Upeka, hmm, I think that was probably hands in the lap, Upeka, which kind of felt like like um like balance and um steady, you know, and, and kind of almost like a, a, a conclusion of what, what had been taking place but the most interesting aspect of it for me was this five minute two minutes five minutes following of the breath and um very much linking into what um francis was was delivering in the talk about just following just knowing whether it's an in breath or an out breath you know tick, 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 very gentle and so that that's um that's my bit and at the time lance said um oh we'd really like to hear that we'd really like to kind of learn that or know it and I, I don't think I ever really did very much about it I think I might have shared it in a limited way with a few people and if anyone had asked me about it I'd shared it with them but not in a big way and I think it would be nice in a way because that in the Amarati book there's also the translation of it which is really quite beautiful as well so. mm -hmm. well, I was going to say I mean I mean um maybe when when people finish asking questions i mean would you would you feel yeah. able to wrap up our our meeting to. our meeting by to. by do it, doing this practice but mm. uh, anyway let's see if uh, yeah i think that was probably hands in the lap upeka which kind of felt like like um like balance and um steady you know and, and kind of almost like a, a, a conclusion of what what had been taking place but the most interesting aspect of it for me was this five minute two minutes five minutes following of the breath and um very much linking into what um francis was was delivering in the talk about just following just knowing whether it's an in breath or an out breath you know tick, 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 very gentle and so that that's um that's my bit and at the time lance said um oh we'd really like to hear that we'd really like to Kind of learn that or know it and i i don't think i ever really did very much about it i think i might have shared it in a limited way with a few people and if anyone had asked me about it i'd shared it with them but not in a big way and i think it would be nice in a way because that in the amarati book there's also the translation of it which is really quite beautiful as well so. mm -hmm. well, i was going to say i mean i mean um but maybe when when people finish asking questions i mean would you would you feel yeah. able to wrap up our our meeting our meeting by to. by do, doing this practice but mm. uh, anyway let's see if uh, yeah thank you i think it would be very suitable but mm. uh, yeah i wonder if i might 
uh, speak again. It just reminds me in a very simple way, uh, Lizzie, from the summer camp, there was a, a song that the children were taught. Is that, is that what you were thinking? And actually, when, when I was asked a long time ago, what would be good for little children, infants, to learn about the, the Buddha's way, it was this uh, little verse. I think it was music that went with it. It was like, may I be well and happy. I can't sing it, actually. May I be well and happy. May you be well and happy. May all be, <laughs> be well and happy. And it was this verse, and they repeated it. But the, the children like the hand gestures, you see. So it was something on those lines and i remember trying to learn to play it actually on a little keyboard so it's obviously uh, <laughs> you know uh, it has that form as well and, and children did like to do that um as a little practice um so just uh, so, because when we did the um you know the wigmore um workshops um, one of the things I did was one of those little ditto doodles oh. with the children and, and it is really catchy and you can kind of play it around, play around with it as I, I quite enjoy playing around with kind of faster, slower, louder, quieter and kind of so if you're in a group, like with, when we're doing the Buddha, you know, mm. um, yeah. Yeah. do that as a warm up with Charles at the start of the chanting week and kind it of just gets you in that frame of connecting and mindfulness with one another in a group. So with the children, it's really great fun. So you get them really loud, 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 loud. With Venerable Kuslo, always had such a knack of bringing out the, the fun side of everything. So the children have to, I think I've got three little bits, yeah. Great. I'd love to share that as well. <laughs> well, that's great. Fancy rediscovering these things. Yes. That, uh, yeah. In the past, it's really wonderful. Yeah. Sometimes you think you don't know anything, don't you? You've forgotten yeah. everything. And, yeah. And, you know, you've dried up, the pool is no longer bubbling around and, and then all of a sudden you get an opportunity or something just springs out. And, oh, yes, I, I know that and I can share that. And, you know, it kind of just, it brings that um, because I think with Mudita, sometimes it's much easier to kind of look around and, and wow, it all so, so good, so successful. So, oh, I'm so happy for that person, you know, genuinely. But then you go back to yourself sometimes and you're supposed to share it and acknowledge it in yourself, aren't you, in the media child section? And, you know, oh, oh God, oh. well, for me, it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what have I learned today, you know? <laughs> sometimes it's quite, quite good to re remember how far you've come. Yes, and, and, and how difficult, I mean. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you. That's lovely to be. Uh, hello, Anne. You've got your hand Hi. up. Here. Yeah. You've unmuted. <laughs> um, am I unmuted? Can you hear yeah. me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you, uh, Valerie and uh, Lizzie. That was really lovely. I think Peter Harvey does this. May I be well and happy? One a little oh, song. Yeah. You be well and happy. Oh, right. Yeah. I think recently he did it as well. Yeah. So that's that's lovely. Lovely. I just wanted to ask Valerie uh, where she stood on this. Um, thing about metta, when we do it mainly we say uh, we wish uh, well-being for ourselves and, and well for all beings which include ourselves and we wish so much so we get full of well-being it sort of overflows but we actually wishing it for other people we wish that they can have this sense but there are some people who say um, you actually spread and you send meta and um, I wonder what you thought about that Valerie can you just wish it or yes, it. Yeah. I, mean, I mean certainly people you I mean you've noticed yourself that it, I think it, it transmits naturally to the, I think I think I think it's a it is a natural thing I, I mean that's why it talks about a, a mother's love for a her child it's not it's not something you have to force to happen it's it's more sort of getting out of the way and letting it letting it happen i think um but um yeah so but you can i mean you can send it and people do seem to experience it at a distance some way but uh, i think it's I don't, I don't think it's something you have to force i think it's something you have to sort of rediscover yeah like magic <laughs> it won't <work> like magic <laughs> uh, oh 
Tony wants to speak. I remember on the course in Ireland, I think it was 2005, I don't know whether Dermot will remember, but there was a conversation about this at table and uh, somebody um, named, quoted, um, it's not always nice being on the receiving end of somebody else's mecca. And in fact, uh, I, and at that point, I recalled being in a group once where um, we sort of, uh, we sat round and somebody walked round and, and transmitted something to people sitting down. And I remember this person standing in front of me and I felt I was kind of screwing up and shrinking. Yeah. And when we asked the person what he was transmitting, he said, unconditional love. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, think thought, it, well, I think, I think um, it wasn't meta. It's, it's a bit no, like, I think it wasn't meta. It, it's a bit like, um, meta. You, you know, when... Can I just, I just add, a, add a question before, before, just to finish, actually? But, uh, that, was, that was anecdotal, but uh, um, the question is, is really getting from the words to the feeling. Uh, sometimes yeah. it uh, happens and sometimes it doesn't for me. Yeah. Um, sometimes I, I'm just staying with the words, um, but the feeling, the real warm feeling in the heart that can sometimes arise isn't there. And I just wonder whether you have anything to say about that. Mm. Yes, true. Of course, we, it doesn't always have to feel sort of warm and, and cuddly. I mean, sometimes it's just a more of clarity. In, in, a, in a way, it's, it's kind of, of um, break, breaking, kind of breaking down the barriers between all beings. So, so, so on that side, it's almost akin to wisdom. So it's sort of getting rid of wrong views and and so on so i think even if it's not not feeling particularly like a warm glowing feeling i think it can sometimes be working but in a di in a different way mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, yeah. but i i think the, the thing you were saying i mean it's like sometimes when when people say I'll, I'll pray for you there's something quite menacing about it you know whereas in other times people don't even need to say and you you just know you know, if you've got Christian friends and if you're going through a bad time, you're sure they are and it's fine because they, mm -hmm. it comes from the, yeah. a good place. But sometimes people, people do, because all, all these states have, have near, near enemies and far enemies. That, and, the, and the far enemies are things that, that, that everybody knows are opposite to them. Like, and, and, um, but the near enemies are things that look, look like them but aren't really. So... So, um, like with uh, loving kindness, obviously the opposite is hate, but uh, with a kind of possessive feeling could be could be the near enemy, and 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 similarly with with um, compassion, obviously the op the opposite is is cruelty, but the the, the near enemy would be something like sadness and depression I suppose I've, I've, I've it's a long time since I looked these up so I'm probably remembering them, them wrong I'm sure somebody can can, uh, can tell me and and um, similarly with with um, um, joy and the joy of others the, the, the far enemy is obviously envy but the near enemy can be a particular sort of kind of kind of excitement and uh, so on so um, Mindfulness. Mindfulness is needed, but but when the, when they're the real thing, they are they are they are they are, um, they are the illimitable. Say so they aren't they are the immeasurable. So they are that they are uh, not something we so little small limited thing that we we own. When they when they when they're um, when they're illimitable, they they fill the universe do with the, the last question um the I, I was there seem to be lots of different ways of practicing loving kindness with and that seems really helpful because different ways seem helpful at different times for different people and i was just okay, popped into my mind uh, some people may remember those mongolian texts that appeared some time ago now and the things I really, some texts that were dug up on the Silk Road, I don't know, some decades ago, I think it must be now, but 
the thing in there that really stuck in my memory were some um, practices for loving kindness that were quite different. So the ones that I remember was for <clears throat> loving kindness for yourself was imagining yourself in a pool of milk. <laughs> so, and that can be very lovely for the right person at the right time. And Aww. then I, you can <laughs> share your, make the pool bigger so that other beings are, are in there as well. So that was, that's a very lovely, lovely thing. And another one in the same text was imagining jeweled rain falling on you. Yeah. you know, in a different, so, and again, um, that could obviously be extended for other beings. For there being a drain falling on there, so um, it just in in my experience, I find it's take, it takes uh, and has taken a lot of um, investigating, really, to different times to find what what actually will, if it's not there, that sense of loving kindness, that something that will bring it alive, which I think is what what we would all that's what we wish for. Um, whether it's for ourselves or other people so um, but can often take a lot of um, investigating to find I think I think I probably thought for a long time it was something either you had it or you didn't you know and then realizing that it is a practice so um, so it's just nice to share like today to share the different things people have mentioned to uh, put in the pool so to speak remind me that uh, that that it's to be human it's they're called the divine abidings and i've come across times as jackie says either for myself or others when you just can't do it you can't have the feeling other t it can come easily and fully but at other times it's um a bit of an obstacle to to actually to get there and i wondered why they're called um divine abidings because in a way what you've brought to us valerie is the human element somehow you know that the, the practice you did was very much a very real and human thing to feel and it and that that that's doable but some they are called divine abidings yes. and that sometimes can make you feel like i never get up there anyway but well, too well, 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 well sometimes i, I suppose the, the the idea is that the, the brahma gods feel like this all the time probably <laughs> All right, that's it. <laughs> but it may just be Brahma is often used as a prefix for things just that mean they're the best, you know. It may just mean they're the very best okay. abi abiding. That's, so. that's a better <laughs> thing, isn't it? Right, yeah, yeah. abiding's interesting because Vihara is actually, I mean, it's often a word used for Buddhist monasteries, but actually it, 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 it's related to words to do with having fun. And, and so Vihara was originally a sort of pleasure garden. And so I suppose... The, the the monastery meaning came from from sort of wealthy donors giving their pleasure gardens to the the monks but uh, but but um but the, the harity is, is is actually as before it i think before it was to live somewhere it was actually to have fun so you know to kind of <laughs> so that's really so, good to approach it definitely so so, so it's somewhere somewhere it's, it's a nice it's a nice place to live good good would never have known that otherwise <laughs> <laughs> me again to speak and Anne wants to speak again i'll go to lizzie first okay i'm um, just going back to you i can't remember now you just um Yes, um, that, that bit about when uh, sometimes you haven't got it or you can't do it and you can't share it um, is, is quite, is quite um, evocative for me really because, uh, you know, I do go into the dark and then into the light and, you know, sometimes you're down a very dark tunnel but then sometimes you're out there in the sunshine and I think when you're in the black, boggy, gucky place, um, you actually can't do it. I mean, sometimes I can't even bear to look at my Christian, let alone light a candle and feel very good and loving towards myself or others. But then, then you are then, without sometimes it doesn't seem to take, it's often something like a, a, a good talk, 
here, it's always some link to Samata. It, it's like as if it just flicks the switch over and you are out there in the sunshine. You've come through that tunnel, uh, you know, again yeah. or whatever. You've come through the difficulties and there you are in the sun. And once you're in the sun, it's like as if there hasn't been any rain for, you know, months and the water's all dried up in the brook. It's like, oh, yes, the water's coming, you know, and it's flowing again, you know, and it's, it's, it's meandering and it's bubbling. And then you, you can just, you've got it in yourself and you can share it in others and there's no effort in it at all. But the times when things are difficult, you, say, you know, I must feel good towards myself and I must feel better towards other people. It's really impossible and it, I think it just goes back to kind of like patience, like Kanti and faith, you know. Um, yeah. uh, Sada, 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 and um, particularly those two, you just have to know People often say, don't, don't they, oh, it'll pass, it's not real. You know, just as the very good things aren't real, then the very bad things aren't real. And you just, you just have to almost sit it out, really, or run it out, whatever way you have to, to get back into the sunshine. And I love looking at Anne because she's, she's got sunshine <laughs> yes. all around her. It's just so gorgeous. Oh, I, mean, I, think, I think if you're feeling in a grump and you switch on and you see Anne, Beaming away with <laughs> yes. Oh, it was good looking at that. No, I think it's down to patience, really, and just yeah. just re recollecting as all, also when you are in that brighter, sunnier, warmer place, really knowing what that feels like, so that when you go back down the pit and the tunnel, so I've got all different images of it, and one of them was the snake pit, really, and there's not one snake, there's millions some days, you know, but kind of just knowing what it's like in the pit yes but knowing more knowing really for the sunshine and the good feeling and the water flowing and everything so that when you are you know things have gone again um if you can just maybe i don't know sit back a little tiny bit you know and just allow yourself to remember what it's mm -hmm. like the other side and maybe just remember that you have gone back into the sun many times many times many times you've gone to the snakes many times many times but you just have to try and remember that it, it isn't always going to um uh somebody said to me um teacher recently said to me um it really clicked home because i was about to go again it's he said you know it doesn't have to be like this and people might have said that to me a hundred times but that one time i went to bed grump but then the singing one of the singing verses of richard's i've only been once but in the night um uh edelweiss started to come and another verse from the <laughs> and it was like I, I don't think i was singing them out loud something was singing them inside but the verse kept coming over and over the same verse over and over again and then when i got a bit bored of that one edelweiss over and over and over and i actually felt the shift happen in, in the night in in the semi-sleep not sleep we you know not quite knowing and then you know you go to bed in that slob and you think hmm oh no how disappointing for everyone tomorrow to find me like this but then you wake up and you've gone you've stayed in that song state you know and you're like ah oh, and i remember that song you know so also if, if there's another slide you can remember that you know and you can remember and maybe you can just open the door a little bit to that potential of that bringing you out again and i really want to say enormous blessings to richard and those other three or four people that day last weekend because I was late I, I couldn't get back from where I was in time so my friend let me know his wireless number and I sat in the garden with my pad and I just moved around different places where the sun was you know and as because nobody can see or hear you hinging, hinging. <laughs> nobody can see you singing so you can have as much fun as whatever and I just thought it was absolutely magical, but particularly as a new technique to, you know, lift you back up again. So it's amazing, and I recommend it. <laughs> right, thank you. Uh, just to say that they are states of mind, aren't they? That the, these things, they're not feelings. So it's surely, for what I, feel, I mean, it's nice to be able to have a sense of well-being, but it's a state of mind. So therefore, for me, it's an intention. It is, it just is, and it's an intention of the mind. So you don't have to feel it as such. I, I, I mean, that's what I'm trying yeah. to say. It's just yeah. there. It's our birthright. We have it. 
that's it and if and we know it and then we just say it and it's there whether you actually feel it or not it works whether you feel it or not that's what i mean thank you Anne. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yes, I, I've got a question, Valerie. Just got to move away from Harry, my dog. He's not feeling well today, so he's making Aww. a bit of noise. <laughs> oh, well, he's sending him some good feeling. Yeah. <laughs> so, we're, um, all say, we're, all say, we're all sending him some good feeling. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Harry. Be well and happy. Yeah. Yeah. But um, my question is um, that when, when you work, you know, as a, as a, as a med Samata meditation teacher and you work with beginners and what, what can happen and what I recognized myself years ago when I was a beginner that getting, getting really involved in the Samata practice, the one to nine. Yeah. And what I'm recognizing um, at the moment with, with one or two beginners is that um, they're very much fixed on, on that. And um, I've gently men mentioning about, you know, meta and opening the heart. And I'm just wondering, um, have you any advice? Because I'm, I'm sure it would be what is exactly needed is to, is to, to turn away from the intensity of, of the, the, the traditional Samhita practice and to work more on a meta practice to get a balance. And I was just wondering if you had any advice there, Valerie. I think you, I think you should try it. And perhaps surprise, surprise of one session by just leading this yeah. different practice. And, and you may find some that, because I, I must say, but I, they're all techniques, aren't they? I mean, the ones, the one to nine is a is a proven technique that's very very good for lo loads of people. But um, I'm currently finding that the 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 the, the um, Brahma Vihara practices work mm. best so, for me. So I'm not. i and, and so I. But I. But, but there are also ways people can do them where they where they can find, aren't there? There's ways you can breathe in uh, meta with it, but that might be a bit complicated for beginners. I think I would just surprise them one night and just they come in and just 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 do something different, and, and it might it might kind of loosen things up yeah, for I people think... and help and also with it, help them. And if you you know if they're a bit stuck with the with with the um, um, state the sixteen stage practice. It might kind of loosen things up for them and help them get the feeling back. So, I, I just give it a, <laughs> give it a try. I will do. Um, and I also, you know, you mentioned um, maybe focusing maybe with beginners. Uh, they the this group have just learnt all the stages, just but to yeah. maybe focus on the meta aspect. Oh yes, just do just do the the meta because so it, keep it keep it simple. And yeah. also, also it's something that that's safe for nearly everybody to do. Apart from that monk who was thinking about his ex wife all the time. But if as long as people don't do anything too too yeah. Too too silly. I I don't think there's anybody in the world that it's going to be bad or harmful for, is there? So so I think you should. Uh, I, I, whereas things like Karen, if somebody does it, approach it the wrong way, they might end up feeling depressed about all the suffering in the world and so on. So you 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 know. So uh, I think you need to build up a good a good um, basis of meta before before introducing the others. I mean, you could talk about the the others but uh, yeah okay yeah that's a good idea but, uh, uh, okay. we were only beginners but once we were taught by our teacher rosie was taking our class just once in the absence of our um, teacher and she said about uh, nine women's teaching about uh, brahma viharas for the practice of all the four stages Karna, the first meta, then the second stage instead of following, you do the yeah. Karna yeah. and Mudita for the third stage and uh, like that. We practice it with your, because it comes from your heart. The feelings is the four stages we go. Yes, but I, I chose the variety of ways of approaching oh, yes. 
Yes. Uh, and when we get together, we find this out. I was wondering, um, Valerie, we're getting towards the end of our time now, and you did invite um, yes. Lizzie to do yes. something. Do, do, do you do yes, so, to do that? Yes. I don't know whether Lizzie yes, knows exactly what, <laughs> what she wants. Uh, well, it's a kind of I can, I can have just go what into a place that's not me, you know? It's not me, it's just... Yeah. It's just, well, just it. do, do, do what feels do what feels appropriate to conclude this meeting. Yes, please. and and, um, and people can do exactly what they want with it, with their hands, with their yeah. anything. Listen, join in, whatever you know, and we'll just go together. Gati, gati, go together. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right then, Lizzie, we'll 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 follow follow your your inclination and go with the flow. <laughs> Okay, as our closing um, practice. Thank you. Meta sahagate na chejasa vipule na mahagate na apamane na awere na ambia Ajena paritua viharati meta sahagate na chetesa e kam disam paritua viharati tata titiam tata tatiam tata chatutam idiutam mado tirian sabadi sabatataya Saba wantam lokam Meta sahagate na chetasa Vipule na mahagate na apamane na Awere na ambia Aje na paritua Kaluna sahagate na chetasa e kam disam paritua viharati tata dutiyam tata tatiyam tata chatutam idiyudam mado tiriya sabadi sabatataya sabawantam lokam Karuna Sahagate na chetasa vipule na mahagate na apamane na awere na ambia aje na paritawa Amudita sahagate na chetasa e kam disam paritua viharati tata jutiyam tata tatiyam tata chatutam idiyudam majo tiriyan sabadi sabatataya sabawantam lokam Amudita sahagate na chetasa vipule na mahagate na apamane na awere na ambia aje na paritawa viharate na chetasa e kam disam paritawa viharati tata dutiyam Tata tatiyam tata chatutam idiyudam mado tiriyan sabadi saba tataya saba wantam lokam upeka sahagate na chetasa uipule na sahagate na apamane na 
Awerena Ambia Pajena Paitova Viharati Sadu 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 Thank you. Well, that was a, a lovely note to end on. And just to thank everyone very much and all the contributions are sort of all part of it. And thank you very much, Valerie. Mm. And next week, thank you, <laughs> thank you Valerie. Thank you. <laughs> um, next week, uh, Rob Adkins is giving a talk um, entitled Raising...